And one of the main indicators they provide is what we call the accuracy, saying, okay, with my system, I, with this constellation based on 24 satellites or 30 satellites, I will be able to provide you with these performances. But which performances? Accuracy. What is accuracy? I will define what is accuracy in order to have clear what is the, the meaning of accuracy. The different, uh, let's say, uh, providers of this constellation, like uh, GPS or Galileo providers, they are publishing uh, regularly what we call uh, the global position, the standard positioning service. Like, for example, in GPS, we call the SPS. In Galileo, we call it open service. But these documents inside, they publish the results, they uh, they commit on the performances using your co this constellation. And one of the main indicators they provide is what we call the accuracy, saying, okay, with my system, I with this constellation based on 24 satellites or 30 satellites, I will be able to provide you with these performances. But which performances? Accuracy. What is accuracy? I will define what is accuracy in order to have clear what is um, the meaning of accuracy. The accuracy is and a statistic, and a statistic of the what we call the positioning error of the error, okay? And the error is the difference between the true and the estimated by the system. Let's imagine I have a positioning error as a function of time. That will be the position of my system estimated by my system, the SPP solution, for example, standard positioning point solution, minus the real, the true, the true position. This is what we call a positioning error, position error. Then this position error as a function of time will have something like it's moving with the time like this. And then we can build a statistic, for example, in 24 hours, we build a statistic and we have a standard deviation like this. And we can have compute some percentiles of this statistics. For example, we can estimate uh, the 67 percentile or the 95 percentile or the 99 percentile, right? Of this statistic as a function of time, yes? Then the accuracy is an statistic of this position in error. Typically, we use the 95 percent percentile as an statistic to give your accuracy. What does it mean 95 percent of the time? It means that 95 percent of the time, if I tell you, for example, your accuracy is four meters, it means that four meters, it means that 5 percent of the time I will be above four meters, and 95% of the time I will be below 4 meters, okay? This is the accuracy you are giving at 95%. Then we have a statistic and we compute this positioning error and we put it in an, for, a, for a time span of one day or whatever, it can have uh, several days, and then you compute this statistic and you say, okay, my accuracy is 4, 5, 6, or whatever. But this statistic, or let's say this positioning error, usually what we call is to project this position error into different domains, depending on the application you are using. For example, you are using aviation, we are interested in two domains, the vertical domain and also the horizontal domain. Yes? If we are talking about agriculture, they don't care about the vertical domain, they care only about the longitudinal and pass-to-pass, -pass, which is the accuracy between two different passes of the tractor, right? We are talking about autonomous cars, we are uh, interested on the along track and the lateral track of the car. We are talking about railway, we are to, uh, talking about the longitudinal track as well. O also the lateral track because different rails, but normally it's the longitudinal, okay? Then this position error, which is a 3D, can be decomposed in different domains, different, uh, different, uh, in different, uh, yes, projection, different axes, okay? Then with these standards and uh, with these standards, for example, GPS publishes this kind of figures. If you see, for example, in the first line, GPS 24 satellites, they say, for example, the horizontal accuracy at 95% in GPS, typical value is 13 meters. For the vertical is 22 meters. In Galileo, using 27 satellites, and if we are in single frequency, we are 8.2 meters or 15 meters in vertical. And if we are in dual frequency, we have a 1.7 and 3 meters dual frequency. And then GLONASS and Beidou, okay? Then they are publishing this kind of minimum performance level they are providing uh, using the constellation, yes? But with some 
let's say, assertions like 24 satellites, the signal power. I mean, they are using this kind of criteria. At the end, the reality is not like this. When you have a receiver, GPS receiver, a Galileo receiver, you will have much better results than this one. For example, I will show you, this is a typical result. If we take a, a receiver in Toulouse, for example, we see this is a result of a, a GPS standalone solution, SPP solution using only uh, 30 satellites GPS. Because at the end GPS, the nominal constellation is built of 24 satellites. But in reality, we have today 32 satellites operational that we can use. Then we have seven or eight satellites more than the ones they are publishing because it's the minimum nominal constellation. Yes. Then we can see here that we can have three meters, four meters, five meters, and not the 13 meters they are uh, publishing. Yes, we are better than this.